Holy Heavenly Lord, Father, we okay. honor you and we praise you for tonight. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we can come together and, and study your word, Father yes, God. As Lord Pastor God. will give us a brief uh, teaching on, on a subject, Father God. Lord, but most of all, we thank you for Sister Nona. That once again, yeah. she witnessed, Father God, your goodness. Yes. Yeah. She said, witness, yeah. God, your faithfulness. She yeah. yeah. witnessed that your word is true, that you will never leave her. Yes. And you are there for yes. Thank you, God, that you are always present. Thank you, Lord yeah. God, that you are yeah. always. Jesus. The love for her, Father God, mm. never fails, Father God. As we I continue mean. to trust you in everything, Father God. We yes. know, Lord God, that you're done with her. There's a lot of things you want her to accomplish, Father God. So you'll continue, Lord, to. Heal her, yeah. strengthen her, whatever is yeah. that right in her body, we, we we bind it and get it out of her body. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord you love her, Father God. Yes. For yes. so what, what she has witnessed, Father God, it's yeah. another testimony of your goodness. Yes. It's another testimony of how you love her. Yes. And Amen. not only her, but all of us who believe yes. in you, Father yes. God. Amen. So we thank you, God. And as we we uh, continue, Lord God, be with us, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, give us the, yeah. the anointing that we can understand the word, yes. the things yes. that will be preached today. Give us a rema, Lord God. Reveal Amen. to us a word. Reveal to us a sentence. Reveal okay. to us a topic, Lord God, that we can fully understand and grasp yeah. and really minister yeah. to our lives, Father God. So yes. We can in use Jesus. it, Father God, in our everyday life, Father God. In Thank Jesus. you, God. Be with us now. Anoint our pastor as he speaks to you. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Actually, I will just do a little opening, but uh, you, the, the lesson will be on video. And uh, uh, what I did was just use the video I had with uh, my online uh, class every, what was that, Tuesday. And I've been teaching there the same thing that I would like to share with you. Uh, it is this, you know, lifestyle of um, the lifestyle of an intercessor. And I think at some point in time, we already did this, but I just want to, again, uh, bring it back to you uh, for the purpose of, you, you know, I mean, you've been, we've been praying, we've been in this, doing intercession, and I don't want, I just want us to get a fresh uh, understanding again, so that we may be refreshed uh, in, as we pray, we don't want to be casual with our praying, we don't want to be familiar with our pray, praying. We need to be refreshed. We need to, you know, uh, understand that, hey, uh, what we are doing, this intercession is, is causing war in the, in the heavens, causing an impact uh, in, in darkness and uh, causing impact in the light of God and so on and so forth. So the, 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 the essence of that, and I think um, you will see from the teaching that uh, I actually the first one was supposed to be the one that we would, but it's, it's longer. So I want you to just take a listen to this one. And then next week, uh, I will do a fresh run. Okay. So mm -hmm. war in heavens. Every time you embark, most specifically in praying, interceding, intercession, and for this, uh, specifically for the things that we pray for, these are not light things. These are really confronting, you know, um, the heavens confronting uh, darkness. And so what does that mean to us when we pray? Uh, when we pray, you, you, you create war in heaven. You, you alert the enemy. And uh, so Daniel, uh, the, 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 the story that I want you to take a look at is would be Daniel was fasting for three, four weeks, right? 21 mm -hmm. days before the supernatural <clears throat> event took place that we read about in Daniel 10. So the topic here is, the subject is Daniel 10, but really started Daniel 7, Daniel 8. So however, we find out later in the chapter that angels and demons were engaged in conflict from the very first day that Daniel set his face to seek God. So, you know, once again, uh, let us be reminded that uh, our prayers are answered. The first day we pray but we may not see uh, the manifestation of that prayer because there, there, there is a warfare going on in the spirit in the same way that we see in, in Daniel 10. So similarly, we don't know all that is taking place in the heavenly realm right now in response to the prayers of the saints. You, you, we are the saints. But we do know the Lord has been bringing revelation to keep us on target, all right? So we have the prayer points, we have all of these things that we're, we're looking at. So. 
um, what we do, what, what's happening is every time we make a presentation of our prayer, uh, that's why we have prayer points. That's why uh, we have scriptures to back up our prayers. Because every time we do that, what happens is we really, we, it's, it, it, we present that. We go into the court of heaven and we present all of those petitions. We present all of those intercession <clears throat> items. So uh, there is a dream here that I want to share with you. Actually, I'm reading from one of the briefings of uh, Lou Engel. He said, in, uh, the, this was the dream of Chris. And he said, in the dream, we were together with our team driving up a hill on a gravel road. There were very large potholes in the road, but we were able to maneuver around them as we got higher up the hill. We all got out of the car and were walking further. And uh, one of the guys looked ahead and saw a small stream of water flowing down the hill. This is just to give us, you know, uh, refreshing. Uh, yet as uh, we got closer, he realized a, a river was flowing, following the stream, and it would completely wash out the, the road. So at this point, Lou told everyone to get back in the car before it got swept off the path. So we realized that this was the wrong road to the top of the hill, and we needed to go down a bit to find another road that would take us all the way up. It was clear that the water was not coming from the top of the hill and we needed to find a way past the source of the flood. So this is just a, you know, an, uh, a prophetic picture of what was happening. So the timing of this dream in conjunction with the timing of the Texas lawsuit uh, has caused us to believe that this new case, uh, this is talking about, you know, the Supreme Court and so on and so forth, but this is true for everything that we do in prayer. It's just sometimes it's more, it's more um, drastic. Sometimes it's more, um, uh, you know, God would show us what to do, what not to do. Just like in the case of uh, when we were in San, San Francisco, you know, for the longest time, even up to the time when in June, when we canceled and moved it to July. I mean, I had no idea how we would proceed. I had no idea what the strategy was all about. I mean, but I continue, like as you, we all continue to pray for San Francisco. I continue to listen to what God is saying. And I wasn't, you know, worried when I wasn't hearing anything. And of course, uh, at that same time, we were, I was having uh, personal warfare <laughs> in my body, but many of us were having pers uh, warfare. I mean, whether personally or corporately, I mean, Lilita with Joshua. I mean, and, and even uh, Sister Nona at that point in time, you know, was having some of those issues and uh, just here and there. And so basically what I'm trying to say before you listen to the video is that because you're standing in the gap and because like Daniel, you are presenting petitions before the court of heaven. And when you do that, you know, um, you must understand that there, there can be warfare. There can be an opposition and there will always be an opposition, especially for the things that we're doing. And so because of that, uh, let's, let's be careful. And, and part of what I'd like to uh, emphasize in, in the teaching of the lifestyle of, a, of an intercessor is that, you know, what kind of life are you supposed to have? Can't be double standard. We can, you know, so you will hear here. And so, because going forward, as we continue to uh, represent the petitions of people, the petitions of nations, the petition of cities, and um, so on and so forth, uh, the more uh, the enemy will notice you, will notice us and what we do. And so your lives, our lives must be presentable to God, must be uh, godly, must be aligned. We must walk in righteousness. And immediately when we find ourselves, you know, digressing, when we find ourselves, you know, uh, getting into distraction, getting into, you know, sin, and then you immediately get right back there with God. Otherwise, uh, you can get into trouble. Because even when you're right with God, you can still get into trouble. Mm. Do you guys understand that? Because it is a fight. 
And so, you know, even more. So uh, the, the, the difference is that when you're right with God, then you, you've got, you know, you've got the assistance of God, you've got all this. And, um, you know, so, but when you're in the wrong, uh, like sometimes, you know, sometimes what we, we really don't uh, see is that, uh, you know, God may be saying something to us and we've been ignoring it. And, you know, we, we, don't, we don't recognize that we're in the wrong. And so even if you're just one inch away from the alignment of God, you're still misaligned. Mm -hmm. All right. In the same way, you know, I mean, Brother Jew knows this. I know this. Some of you with a back, back ache or, you know, et cetera. You know that when, when your spine is in misalignment or something is wrong with the spine, you know, that will immediately relate to your whole body and, it will signal pain and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm, I'm going to say. So uh, Jeremy is going to show you the, the video and, uh, um, you know, you don't, I don't have to come back to you. Um, there, you can have a 10 or 15 minutes, like I said to Sister Regina, 10, 15 minutes uh, to talk about it. But uh, what I really would prefer would was for all of you in this in this platform right now, in this broadcast, in this teaching, is to come back to uh, the intercessory group prayer for, for the adults and for the intercessory YG, intercessory chat room, and then uh, post your input in there on what you got from tonight's video. All right. So this is for the topic of the effective uh, characteristic of an effective intercessor. The lifestyle of an intercessor. This is going to be our our like last um, uh, last series. Then. But uh, so let's just kind of you know um, uh, finish this, and but at the same time allow this uh, uh, topics and you know teaching that we have been going through uh, as our foundation, as something to uh, always remind us that prayer is not boring, is not a chore, it is not a job, it is an invitation to come in union with God, to come to commune with Him. So again, lifestyle of an, what is a lifestyle of an effective intercessor? Uh, we go back to James emphasizing commitment to godly living as essential to cultivating an effective prayer. Let's take a look at James 5, 16. Uh, it can be in the New King James, Jeremy, uh, I mean, Al Angelo. So it's, he says, confess your trespasses to one another. This is still part of, you know, having a re relational um, uh, good relation, relationship with each other, when we can confess our wrongs, our, our issues, you know, to one another so that we may have accountability. And then that's what he's, he, he prayed and, and pray for one another, you know, which we're doing, which you're doing, and that you may be healed. So part of healing is really praying for each other, but also confessing to one another and the relevance of being related, having a good community. Uh, relationship with each other. N no schism, no bitterness, no unforgiveness, no uh, chismes, no uh, grumbling, no murmuring and complaining, no backbiting. That's, that's kind of, you know, if you're going to be an effective intercessor, it's going to be from that premise of a lifestyle. So you notice here, this is very important. And I, I kind of, you know, really dive into that. The effective fervent so the prayer that we're looking for, the prayer posture that we are supposed to, we are invited towards into is effective. It is effective and fervent. It's not happenstance. It's not boring. It's not just for the sake of give me, give me, give me, but it's for the purpose of uh, aligning with God and partnering with the Holy Spirit and allowing him to direct us into um, the prayer that he wants, you know, uh, for us to pray and intercede because you know the regular prayer is a regular prayer but to be an intercessor and do intercession is kind of a different uh a different way of praying it it requires more and that's why it requires a lot of uh you know it's a lifestyle of godliness 
Okay, so he's saying, emphasizing, James is emphasizing that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That's when it avails, when, you know, we're open to confess, be accountable for ourselves, that we don't hide any sin, that we're not, you know, having a mask, we're not pretending that we're real people, the authenticity of who we are as a believer and as a, a Christian is going to be, you know, over, I mean, it's good. We're, we're transparent, you know, and then we pray for one another and healing comes into the body uh, of Christ, into our local churches and into the uh, global or international uh, church body of Christ. Next. So even in this session, we, uh, part of our growing prayer, we look for four, we're four effective prayer and that's prayer rooted in faith prayer in the context of good relationships and prayer from a lifestyle of righteousness and prayer that is earnest or that engages with God over the years. It's constant. You build a history with God because of your prayer lifestyle, because of your communion, because of your intimacy. And um, I, I, you know, rooted in faith, what is that? That you know, you know God, that you have that relationship. That you're not just going to church to fulfill, fulfill or do a Bible study to complete a chore, but that because this is what sustains you. This is your way of life, you know. Uh, this, is, this is who you are. Uh, so rooted, so rooted in faith, rooted in faith, that you got a deep understanding of what God, who God is, of his character, of his nature. Of uh, you have a relationship with him, you draw to him, you draw with him, uh, and a prayer from a context of a relationship with God, wholehearted love with him, and then allowing your your relationship with God to be to relate to others. Oh, how how's your relationship with your wife, with your husband, with your family, with your children, with your leaders in the church, in the body of Christ, uh, with each other? When you're uh, offended, what do you do? When, you, uh, are, when you're trapped in the sin, what do you do? You repent. You know, that's the kind of attitude and that's the kind of uh, uh, relationship uh, God is looking for. That you're not afraid to repent, to recognize what's wrong with you. You do not insist on rationalizing and adopting, allowing the scripture to adjust to your uh, sin or to your whatever you are not you know, supposed to be. And so, so the prayer, uh, prayer from a life, that's a prayer from a lifestyle of righteousness. When you sin, just repent, go before God and repent, uh, admit your sin, uh, recognize your fault and, you know, pray that you may not go there again, remove the occasion of sin, uh, close that door, you know, and, and walk right because our prayers are heard because you're right there, right with God. You're aligned with him. You, you remember, you know, when your back is not in alignment, I mean, you, ha you experience all of this pain, all of this excruciating pain in your body. And uh, in the same way, you know, when a car is not aligned, um, the, the wheels are not aligned, you know, it, it wobbles and you can get into uh, a terrible accident. And, and same thing for us, if we're not aligned with God, we really are outside of his parameters and therefore our prayers will just be a zilt, you know. And so and and, and it's gotta be earnest. In other words, it is engaged, it has it has uh, constancy, it has uh, you know, engagement, it has it's 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 real and it's fervent, it's a devotion. And we see that in the life of Daniel as we looked at it uh, a while ago, right? I mean, in the uh, previous studies. All right, next. So those four things, I hope you will remember those, you know, uh, prayer rooted in faith, prayer rooted in righteousness, uh, lifestyle of righteousness, prayer that is uh, rooted in uh, uh, right relationship, and then, you know, an earnest and engaged uh, praying. So. Again, there goes the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Why? In the same, yeah, we were given an example. James gave us an example. Elijah was a man just like us, you know, just like us. He's not the superman. He is he's Elijah who trusts, in, who trusts God, who walks with God, 
was fervent with his call, fervent with his relationship with God. And he has the same nature. And so when he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, it didn't rain. And the same thing for us, our words, our prayer, when we direct it, you know, according to uh, the lifestyle of an effective and efficient, effective and fervent prayer uh, person, right with God, I mean, our prayers are heard. And of course, it's not as dramatic as what we saw in Elijah in his days, but uh, it is still potent and impactful in the spirit realm. We saw that in uh, the story of Daniel, that when he, he prayed, you know, we saw that, ha- that, 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 that there was commotion in the spirit realm. There was a fight happening in the spirit realm. And the angel Gabriel said to, because you prayed. And I really be- believe that because we pray, a lot of things are happening in the spirit realm and we cannot be weary in our prayer in uh, doing good. Uh, do not be weary in well-doing and, and prayer is well-doing. Being an intercessor is well-doing because in due season, we will see the, the, you know, the, the harvest. We will see the reward. We will reap the reward of our prayer. But even when we don't see it, you know, you remember the uh, three Hebrew boys, I mean, when they were being, they refused to bow to the image of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you know, they said, we will not bow because our God is able to deliver us. But if he, he does not deliver us, we will still not bow to you. And we saw the impact of that uh, faith resolve. Uh, th- their faith, you know, uh, caused uh, the son of God to walk with them in the furnace and they were not singed, They were not burned. There was no smell of smoke. And at that same time, the impact was that Nebuchadnezzar was provoked to believe in the God of the Hebrew boys. So those are the kind of things. And many times we don't see the result, but know that it is by faith and not by sight. Amen. Uh, that we believe that when we pray and we have scriptures to attest to that. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open to you. And that's why the emphasis on uh, our right relationship with God, lifestyle of righteousness is going to be very important in our prayer, knowing we will know, we know, you know, when your prayers are heard. And it's just in a due time that the manifestation of that, as we saw in, uh, in Daniel, 21 days, he prayed for 21 days. And on the 21st day, on the last day, the angel Gabriel came to him and announced to him that his prayers were heard the first time he prayed. But because there was a fight, you know, the, uh, the prince of Persia was, was coming against him. So there was a skirmish going on in the spirit. And so on the 21st day, he saw the manifestation. The angel Gabriel attested to him that, you know, his prayers are answered, but he needed help from the uh, from Michael, the archangel. Amen. So let's go next. And uh, whatever we ask here, 1 John 3.22 tells us, confirms to us that whatever we ask, we receive from him, from God, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And so that's, you know, being aligned with him, right with him, having intimacy with him, having right relationship with other people, being constant, whether we see a proof or not, whether we see the evidence of our answered prayer or not, we, we, we are constant, we are, we are diligent, we are, you know, there. We don't leave our post, we continue to stand on the wall as watchmen. Amen. Next. So, we see this also in the New Testament. New Testament has much to say about our lifestyle and their relationship to effective prayer. So walking in obedience is not about just uh, seeking to earn the answers to our prayers. And that too, it will. But that's not the foremost uh, goal. The goal is that we, uh, we are living in agreement with love because God is love. We, we are in agreement with God. We, we know what his word is saying. We understand what the spirit is pronouncing for us, uh, leading us to go through to what kind of praying, where to go, how, how to do all this. And so that becomes very, your relationship with God is going to be very important. And um, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, how 
we allow ourselves to yield to him, to him and to his direction is going to be very key uh, to, for us to, continue to, con to have the confidence to really pray in earnest and in efficiency. Next. So we saw that in the New Testament. So our basis is what? That through the blood of Jesus and our agreement with God in faith that our prayers, though sometimes, you know, it seemed weak or seemed like, you know, it's not going anywhere. It will ascend to the throne of God in power. And, and that's hinge on how related you are, how confident you are that your intimacy with God, that you know him, that you know him, even if you're not feeling well, even if your uh, wordings are a little bit here and there, you know, but you know that you're praying in earnest, that you're praying in faith, that you have a relationship, that you're walking right with God, you know that your prayer will ascend into the throne of God in power and in, 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 in effectivity. Next. So we saw that Daniel's life again, his life of faithfulness did not, he did not earn God's power in prayer because he was just faithful. Rather, it positioned, and that is so, so important for us to understand that we need to just be positioned uh, uh, like Daniel, he positioned himself to live in greater uh, agreement with God. And it was this agreement that made his prayers so effective. Well, you said that. And so that becomes uh, our, un we, we un need to understand that, understanding. That's why, again, I would like to just sidebar here with a prayer of Paul uh, for the Ephesians, you know, uh, that, that, they, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation be upon them, that they have eyes to see that they, they be illumined, they will be flooded with the light of God to see the hope to which Jesus Christ has called us. When we understand that, we understand our position. We're, we're positioned to be a joint heir with him. We're positioned, seated on the right hand side. We're positioned, uh, we're born again, not because of uh, our recycle, being recycled, but we're born again through the resurrected life of Jesus Christ and so on and so forth. And those positions us and allows us to be in agreement with God, with our position, our posture, uh, who we are, who God is to us. And that becomes, you know, that, that makes our prayer so effective and so uh, impactful. Next. So what does the lifestyle of an effective intercessor look like? And, uh, you know, because we were ending here, I just want you to remember you've got the notes. And so, you know, keep, keep going at it and, and keep looking at the life of Daniel. And con uh, we, we, because we will consider Daniel's dedication as an effective lifestyle of an intercessor. We especially note his consistency, very important consistency. You know, because when, when, when things are difficult, when things are busy, when, you know, a lot of distraction comes, you know, you must insist to get back there. I mean, we saw it in Daniel's life, regardless that he might be, he would be fed to the lion because of the, uh, that, you know, uh, his violating the law of the land of not praying unless uh, to the, uh, the statue again of, of, um, uh, what's his name, Darius. And so, you know, here we see his dedication. Here we see his constancy. We also see his faithfulness. He, he, we see his dedication. We see his fearlessness, you know. And so uh, his determination to walk in obedience and seek understanding of God's purpose for his generation. And part of us being intercessor is, you know, understanding times and season, understanding when, what, and how. And uh, but the consistency of our being in the before the face of God, before His throne, before you know, in, in prayer, we we do not relegate coming before God as a second secondary thing. We do that's prime. That's very central to our faith and our believing. Next. So let's look at examples of others who cultivated long history in God. So this is this is. Part of what I'd like to emphasize to us is history. Every time we come before God, every time we pray, every time we read the Bible, every time we, we engage with God and encounter Him, we build a history. And because you build that history with Him, uh, when, when tough time comes, when, when, when real hard and difficult testings and trial happens to us, we're in, we would be encountering that we look back to our history with God. That's why even studying the Bible, seeing how 
men and women of God, you know, they, they failed in many cases and here and there, and yet they rose up. They, they went back. They had a history with God uh, that they can recall and bring before God and be encouraged with. And so this is, you know, uh, again, here, we will look at examples of those who cultivated long history in God, okay? Uh, we remember Cornelius, right? An angel appeared to Cornelius to let him know that his many years of prayer and faithfulness would be remembered by God forever. Yeah? Next. So here's the scripture in Acts 10, 2 to 4. A devout man who feared God. See, that's being right with God. You walk in the fear of God. You walk in fear and trembling before God. Not because you're afraid of him, but because you reverence him. You bow before him. You honor him. You just don't come to him nonchalantly or casually, but with reverence, with an acknowledging that he is God. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And most of all, he is your father. He is our father. He is the father of glory. He is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, he, he, this, is, this is what he was saying. This is the description of Cornelius. He was a man who feared God, who gave alms generously and prayed to God always, meaning consistent, constant, fervent. He saw, he saw it clearly. So he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. So he said to him, your prayers and your aunt have come up for a memorial before God. So we are confident. We know that um, our prayers stands as in a memorial before God, stands before God. He remembers it because it's standing right there. You know, it, 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 it's postured, it's positioned before the throne of God. So that's, that's why Paul says, you know, to the Galatians, do not be weary in well-doing because there will be opportunity for us to be weary, to be tired. We're still human beings on this earth and we're still under, you know, those kind of pressure. But he says, do not be weary because it will come to you. Don't go there. Do not be weary in well-doing because in due season, there is a harvest. Did you sow in tears? Did you sow in prayer? Then you will reap your harvest of prayer and the answer to your tears. Amen. Because it stands as a memorial before God. Next. So we see, we take a look at Anna. You remember Anna, you know? Anna prayed consistently for many years. You see that in Luke 2, 36, 38. She was widowed after seven years of marriage. And after that, she gave herself too much prayer. At 84 years old, about 60 years later, she was still ministering to the Lord in much prayer. This is such a remarkable life. And um, until, you know, because he was, she was forerunning. She was forerunning, preparing the way for the first coming of Jesus Christ. And she was right there in the temple when Jesus was dedicated on the eighth day of uh, his, uh, being born on the earth. Next, Angela. So there was one Anna. This is what the narrative in the scripture says. Anna, a prophetess. She was a prophet. So she understood the times and the season. And it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't matter that it took 60 years for, him, for her to see the answer to her prayer. Uh, she was of a you know, great age. Like, you know, and and, and, and uh, this woman was a widow of about yeah, 84 years and who did not depart from, he did, she did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayer night and day. This is devotion, you see. Next. Uh, we see Mary. Actually, I forgot to add here as Simeon. Simeon was also an old prophet. You know, he, he was there, was an old man, and he prayed, and he was in the temple all the time, also forerunning and preparing the way for Jesus to come uh, the first time. So uh, that's also our posture for the second coming. That's why our emphasis, that's why there's this revival in bringing back a strong anointing a strong outpouring of the Spirit of God for intercession and intercessory prayer and intercessors. So we, we, now let's take a look at Mary. Mary, a young woman, single woman, was never mentioned and never mentioned in the book of Acts. She was not known in the courts of man for her ministry. However, she will be known forever in the courts of heaven for her faithful love. Let's take a look at her here. This is the same woman that broke the alabaster box on Jesus' feet. It's time. The Spirit highlighted her in the scripture. She is described as sitting at the feet of Jesus. You will see that Luke 10, 39, and John eleven thirty two 32, and 12 verse, uh, John 12, verse 3. Next. 
Jesus prophesied that Mary's heart of faithfulness, wow, and devotion would not be taken from her. It, it, he even said it will be a memorial. Every time the gospel is preached, she will always be remembered. He was prophesying of grace. Jesus was prophesying of grace on her life that would sustain decades of faithfulness to Jesus as she continued to choose that good part. See, it's a good part. That's why uh, Paul says do not, to the Galatians, do not be really well-doing. It is a well-doing. It is a good part for us to do, to be praying. Amen. Next. So Mary, who sat, also sat at Jesus' feet, heard his word, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen a good part which will not be taken away from her. See, as an intercessor, this is not going to be taken away from you. If, you. if you accede to this invitation, it is a lifestyle. It is a lifetime of commitment. It is like breathing the air. You are never, you know, your life is never for any other thing except to minister to the Lord in prayer, intimacy, and, and you know. Devotion to him. Next, we, let's take a look at uh, the priests of Sadok. These are the, the group of priests who minister, who, uh, take care and maintain God's sanctuary. Uh, they were faithful in that. Uh, God, so God promised to bless their family line in the age to come. How much more will God reward the individual priests of Sadok who actually kept the charge of the sanctuary by their faithfulness over decades in it in their day and same day? We're called to be priests and kings in, in, in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ. We're priests. Why? Because we bring to God the prayers of the people and we bring to the people the answer and the presence of God to the people. And we're kings because we legislate, we rule, we reign. We have authority to declare and decree. We have authority to um, bring uh, in heaven, the will of God in heaven, uh, as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, his kingdom to come uh, in heaven as it is uh, in, in, in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Next. So the lifestyle of an effective intercessor is evidenced by his, our history with God. What's your history with God? doesn't matter if, you know, it's just a month old or a uh, two days old is still a history and you can still depend on that. You can still be confident in your history because it still works, all right? And uh, it, it will trigger you to continue to develop a history with God because that's, that's who you become and that's where your strength is going to come from. That's where your faithfulness, your, your communion, your uh, Hunger and thirst for God will come from. So remembering. So intercess, consistency and constancy. That's what I'm always saying uh, when I teach. We've got to be consistent. we be constant. we got to be faithful. And when you fail here and there, you get back there and, and take it back again. You know, get back into that posture and position yourself to uh, be in agreement with God. So the other thing, what happens is when you're doing all this, when you're coming before God, when you're having a history with God, I mean, you're, you, you're, you're, whole, you're wholehearted in your obedience. You're quick to obey. You're listening because your, your posture is towards obedience. So, and then, of course, there is the reward for this faithfulness and obedience. And the Lord revealed his love to Daniel in a deep way. And so he will do the same thing for us to so an angel who addressed him as greatly beloved. I still can get over that. Greatly beloved. I would like for somebody to say to me, God, you know, send an angel. and Linda, you are greatly beloved. Amen. You know, uh, the, the tra intercessory training um, chat room to class is greatly beloved by God because you pray. Amen. In next. <laughs> Imagine an angel telling you, yeah, I was just saying that, similar to this. The Lord is moved by the way you live. He is moved by your hunger for him and by your lifestyle choices and prayers. Because, you know, the minute you're aligned with God and the minute you continue to spend time with him, you, he, he becomes, you're so passionate with him that he becomes the very thought and the very breath that you breathe. And there's no more separation there. That's why that song was so relevant to me. This is communion. 
to be one with you. This is communion. Amen. Next. So here's just the narrative of John 10, 11, and 19. And he, the angel said to me, oh, oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, I have been sent to you. And he said, oh, man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So, you know, uh, in our consistency, in our constancy, in our, in our stand with God, in our faith in him, and, uh, uh, and our uh, building a relationship with him, we, we get stronger in that. That's why the command is not to be weary, but be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Okay, so, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a lot, but you already walk in that. And then most of uh, what we're doing in this, in the study is like reinforcing, reiterating, uh, bringing to your remembrance what you already know to do and what you probably have not uh, done before. You know, it, it's presented to you that you may, uh, stand on those foundation and then uh, and then re 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 answer back you know get back into that invitation get back and uh, let have a wholehearted um, uh, obedience before God so it's it's you know all of these things that we're we're talking about I mean you've heard you've been taught but I the difference would be there's a special anointing right now. There is a stronger anointing because we're nearing the return of Jesus. And there's because there is this revival of, for intercessors to arise again. Uh, there's a revival happening and the, an outpouring of the Spirit of God is coming to prayer. The Spirit of prayer is being poured out because uh, the prayer of a righteous man avail it much and as we together stand like if one can send a thousand to fly to ten thousand can you imagine you know just from this platform how much efficient and effective our prayers what impact would that do but at the same time we understand that when we pray we impact the heavens and therefore we stir up darkness and we stir up the the angels of god and there will be a skirmish there and you and i may be feeling the effects of that in our physical being. That's when, you know, uh, warfare comes. That's when all kinds of uh, uh, destruction comes. And, you know, we know why, you know. Uh, so uh, this is always, there's always a rest back. There's always going to be a retaliation from the enemy. But, hey, greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. And so you draw from your relationship with God. You draw from your history with God. You draw from knowing that even just in this platform, there are people, uh, you know, joined to you and praying for you and standing with you and their lifestyle of godliness will supply to you and whatever you might be facing, you will have the strength, the courage and uh, the power of God to get over it, you know, and, and win over it quickly and have an understanding because it's important to understand why there's an attack over against you. There's, there's testing, there's trial. That understanding is going to be very, very important in the last days because it is the spirit, you know, spirit of wisdom and revelation, understanding the seven spirits of God is, is going to be massively coming upon us as we allow ourselves to yield to God and to the Holy Spirit in, in their leadership over us because there is going to be a lot of... Uh, destruction and a lot of deception and a lot of uh, chaos happening in our midst, we cannot be distracted by God. We continue to be focused on who he is, what he's doing, where we're going. We will not ignore the attacks. We will not ignore the troubles that are coming, but we cannot be swallowed up by that. We cannot be distracted by what's going on. We know it's coming. We know they're coming. <laughs> we're actually getting ourselves ready that there's be more coming you know it's going to be perilous times as in second timothy chapter three perilous times shall come unprecedented warfare shall be uh, uh shall come to us as a body not just to us individually but as a body because the goal of the enemy is to destroy us Re revelation 12, 12 tells us that uh he the the devil know that his time is short and so he's, he's really making merry he's really doing everything he's trying to release his wrath, his anger, his fury upon 
the people of God. For as long as the image of God is visible in us, the walk in righteousness, I mean, he hates us. He hates you. It doesn't matter. We hate him too. So, you know, the, the feeling is mutual. So there's no problem there. But, you know, when we know that your, your camp is with God, your camp is with Jesus, your camp is with the Holy Spirit, you belong to the kingdom of light. You've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. And so those are, you know, you know all that. Uh, we're just kind of reinforcing it, you know, as uh, if you want to be really raised up as, a pray, as an intercessor, it's going to be different from your regular praying and your regular and the regular prayer that a lot of people do. This is this, this, you know, you got to live a certain kind of life. You got to live a certain kind of faith. You got to live a certain kind of, uh, uh, you got to watch your relationship with others. And when you're watching your relationship with others, the more, you know, an attack in that area is going to come. All of a sudden, there's this opportunity to be offended, opportunity to be hurt, opportunity to be betrayed. Don't go there. Just forgive. Just let go. You know, this is not important. Life is too short. I, I don't want to, you know, uh, I don't want my prayer life and my lifestyle to be injured just because somebody is just not happy with me or, you know, just forgive, just humble yourself and just, you know, be the better person, be a peacemaker. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Just go ahead. And, uh, you know, if you want to make comments, you, you, you go ahead to 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know your timing. It's 849 in my time. And so, you know, go ahead. Um, I just wanted that to become a, a rem re reminder for us, a refocusing, a refreshing, a, you know, this is something that, like I said to that class, I mean, say, saying to you, I mean, you know this, you've been taught this, but in many, many cases, um, you know, an opportunity to be wearied, an opportunity to relax, an opportunity to just kind of say more, say more, uh, will be available for all of us because, you know, the fight will always be there. But in most cases, you're vigilant in this, you're doing this, you know, uh, as faithfully as you can. And I am grateful for that. And so just keep doing what you're doing. You know, this is, this is my job to continue to poke at us and remind us and refresh us and reiterate to us what we already know but for it to go a little bit deeper and then and also like a warning that you know every time we do this it is a fight it is a battle and so it behooves for us to really be um, serious uh, and and to be to be thoughtful and to be discerning amen <laughs>